Hi everyone, today's topic is governance structure of Islamic financial institutions. And we have here today with us is Tayyip. Tayyip, just like I mentioned in my early videos, is a certified Islamic banker, member of working groups of AOP, and certified Islamic professional accountant. Thank you very much, Tayyip, for joining us today. Welcome to our next video. Thank you for having me once again. Today, if you can tell us about a bit about governance structure of Islamic financial institution. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Let me start by saying that the governance structure of Islamic banking is basically is different than the conventional financial institutions. Apart from the corporate governance, there is another layer of governance that is for the that is specific to Islamic financial institutions, and we call it a Sharia governance structure. This Sharia governance structure is, is basically to ensure the Sharia compliance of the transactions uh, the Islamic banking uh, business does. And this is very important and very critical for the perception and the confidence of the public that Islamic banks are doing their business as per the Sharia. So on top of it, there is a Sharia supervisory board or in some countries, the Sharia advisor. This is the highest authority in this structure that directly reports to the board of directors or to the shareholders. These are appointed by the shareholders of the company. These are the bodies you can say, which is parallel to the board of directors of, the, of any, any normal company. Then on the management side, actually there are three different pillars that support this Sharia governance structure. The first one is the head of Sharia or in some countries, Sharia manager. This is the guy who actually run, uh, work with the management to ensure Sharia compliance and to ensure that all the guidelines issued by Sharia supervisory board are actually implemented. Uh, this Sharia uh, manager or Sharia, of head of Sharia is basically heading three distinct units. One is the Sharia audit unit, the Sharia compliance unit, and Sharia risk unit. So this whole structure led by Sharia board uh, and Sharia manager and three different functions is, a, the, is the basic structure for any governance in, uh, in any Islamic financial institution. So this head of Sharia, does he do regular audits to ensure Sharia compliance and like review of uh, Sharia practices within the institution? Yes, you, in a way, yes, it is not, it is a separate function from the internal audit function that the entity normally has. It is a unique function, which is specific to the Islamic financial institutions. There are two individuals or two units, depending on the size of the institution, which they are reporting to the head of Sharia. And they do the only uh, audit or to ensure compliance only with respect to the Sharia compliance. Their roles are pretty much defined. If we talk about the qualifications, yes, every country has defined, uh, you know, uh, what, who can be a Sharia, head of Sharia. Not every person can be a head of Sharia. They need to have minimum basic qualifications, like uh, must be, uh, you know, a PhD doctor in Islamic finance or in any other thing. In must have some, you know, uh, experience in Islamic jurisprudence and all these things. He must have five to 10 years of experience, even in, in some countries, they have laid down this condition as well. So not everybody is fit to this rule. There is always, there is always a very a pro, fit and proper criteria defined for this rule, uh, for this role. And then uh, this guy is heading three different teams as I mentioned earlier, Sharia audit, Sharia compliance and Sharia risk. Okay. So you just mentioned that depending on which country and which jurisdiction that financial institution is operating, that may define that like the basic criteria for the Sharia manager or head of uh, head of Sharia. So that raises a question. Is the governance structure across all financial institutions across the globe are same? Our local laws, our jurisdictions, they dictate a few changes to the structure as well. 
Yes, uh, let me start with the, there is, there is a, you know, a, a model structure which is given in the governance standards of EOFI, but every country has a right to modify that structure in a way that suits their, you know, uh, local requirement. For example, in some countries, when they start the Islamic banking, they start with Islamic banking windows. Islamic banking windows have a thin capital requirements so they can't afford a bigger structure at the beginning. So at the beginning, they only have a Sharia advisor, one individual who served the role of a Sharia advisory board. And as the business grows and as uh, the industry matures, they introduce the Islamic, uh, the Sharia supervisory board into their structures. And secondly, some countries have central Sharia boards at their central bank level, and other countries don't have these Sharia supervisory boards at their central bank levels. So if there is a board at a central bank level, then it looks after the overall structure of Islamic finance and industry in a country where the Sharia supervisory board looks after the, in, the individual institution. So this is very important to understand that whenever there is a centralized Sharia board, they look at a very high level you know, decisions where the industry is facing. Whereas the Sharia supervisory board is local to any institution, and he has to decide how the rules and regulations are implemented in that particular institution. Whereas the decisions taken by the central Sharia board at the central bank level is applicable to the industry as a whole. So these are the major things where the countries differ from each other, whether they have a central Sharia board or not, whether they follow a Sharia advisor structure or Sharia, or Sharia supervisory board structure. And moreover, the, the uh, the fit and proper criteria for any member of Sharia supervisory board or for head of Sharia may also vary from country to country. So, so you just mentioned that there are there are bodies that define standards and they define model structure of financial institution. You mentioned AOV. So, how many bodies are there, and what kind of standards do they do they develop, and how do they implement yeah. it? Primarily, there are two bodies which are working on the standard setting level for the Islamic financial industry. One is the Islamic Financial Services Board and other is the Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions, which we call the AOFI. These two bodies are primarily working for the same objective, but in a different manner. IFSB is mainly working for the regulators and their main focus is on the capital market and standardization of the market. So they are, they are working on a, on a high level. AOFI on the other hand is a standard setting body that uh, develops standards for accounting, for auditing, for Sharia and for governance standards. So the four types of standards that EOFI develops. And these standards are very much or close to the international accounting standards or international financial reporting standards or international auditing standards that are applicable to uh, you know, uh, uh, to, the, to the financial institutions. So you can say AOFI is a body that produces the accounting standards in parallel with IFRS, which are applicable to the conventional banking and AOFI standards, which are applicable to the Islamic financial institutions. Islamic financial institutions, they do not follow IFRS? Yes, they do not follow IFRS and wherever the explicit guidelines are available in uh, uh, EOFI standards and the countries who have actually adopted EOFI standards, they are bound to follow the treatments given in the EOFI accounting standards and wherever no explicit, explicit guidance is available in EOFI standards, yes, they can refer back to uh, IFRS uh, for their reporting and disclosure requirements. One important thing that I like to mention is that Sharia compliance is the paramount for every Islamic financial institutions. So wherever they feel that there could be a potential non-compliance, they may refer this subject to their Sharia supervisory board for their guidance and uh, for their opinion. But yes, and uh, the countries, some countries has fully adopted uh, AOFI standards, some countries are you know, only adopted for the guidance purpose. Those countries who fully adopted, even the audit report is issued based on the AOFI auditing standard and not on the international uh, auditing standards. So they have auditing standards as well. 
So where can I find these standards? Is it like something that uh, I can go to AOP's website and find these standards? Yes, uh, AOP uh, standards are available on their website. Also, they also publish in the book form, which you can buy from their website. They also offer uh, soft copies, which are of course paid. So you can, we can buy it from their website. So if any of our viewers, they wanna be part of Islamic uh, financial institution, or Islamic financial industry, are there any certificates or educational, uh, like diplomas or anything that are available that they can study? Yes, there are a number of certifications available in, for the Islamic financial institutions. The two most prominent ones are Certified Islamic Professional Accountant and Certified uh, Sharia, Sharia uh, Advisor, which is uh, offered by AOFI. There is also a SEMA Diploma in Islamic Accounting, which is also a very uh, exhaustive uh, certification. There's also a certificate, certification Islamic Finance, Islamic Finance Qualification, which is also very famous among the, among the Islamic financial you know, students and the professionals. These are the main three bodies which are offering uh, such kind of certification for Islamic students, Islamic finance students and the professionals. Well, thank you very much, Taya, for your time today. And if any of the viewers, they have any questions, please feel free to uh, put some comments or send us emails uh, at this email address. Thank you very much, Taya. Thank you, everybody, for watching the video. Thanks for having me.